This is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones obviously under heavy, heavy Masonic influence. <laughs> <laughs> when you finally boil it all down, magic is imagination. We, we, we are moving into an age of manifestation. Make things become actually less material, more ethereal. The, the, the golden dawn is when we awaken to this new, new, new station of life. What you think becomes real quicker. Regain our imagination, regain our inner child, and let that inner child out, 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 out. My name is Frank Castle, founding member of the music group High Slick and New York City Neo Shaman. After a serious injury sidelined my career in 2013, I decided to set out on an adventure to search for myself with the help of the plant medicine, Ayahuasca. What I discovered waiting for me was something I could have never prepared for. It was time for me to become something more. Someone more. It was time I became fearless. Space and time. When the light starts to shine inside your third eye, you awake to the knowledge that you never die. Look at that. It was muted. It was muted. Oh, All what's right. up, everybody? It's your man, Frank Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm your Sorcerer Supreme and host right here on Truth Frequency Radio, and this is Fearless, and I'm sitting here with my ethereal translator, Paula Milo. Hey, hey, everyone. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Chris and Cherie. Without you guys, we wouldn't be um, here doing it. Uh, it. Not like this at all. So we love you guys very, very much. Shout out to the chat room. Shout outs to everybody in the Fearless family, and sorry about that. I had it muted, and I thought I had it unmuted, and uh, rock and roll. That's just how we roll. So I apologize for that. Do you remember we did that one show for like 10 minutes? Yeah, <laughs> and we were just yap, yap, yapping away. Don't forget to go to imwearefearless.com and check out all the latest and the greatest from all the Fearless artists. Um, every time you buy a piece of artwork or, or uh, clothing from the store, the artist gets 50% right up front of... Um, the price of uh, the product you help support them and uh and they're in denver's in denver no endeavors <laughs> well if they're in denver you stop and say hi and then you say what are you doing i'm in denver you know what i'm saying oh i have to thank rob again i love my care bears t-shirts i love them thank you so much shout out to rob holy he's been taking over uh shout out to every i just keep shouting out everybody to the fearless family well, group. we have to say thank you, you no know? absolutely absolutely um, so we took a step back, light, light step back from the meditations, from the, from the group work, because <clears throat> the message started to come through that it's time now for everybody to put their pieces together, right? So we ga we gather, we were gathering, um, five nights a week, approximately, give yeah, or take a lot. for months since Chris has been since Chris went to the pyramid before he went to the pyramid and <clears throat> we practiced and we practiced and we practiced and this isn't something that you stop, right? It's, it's a lifestyle change. <clears throat> so there's about 300 people in the group now. So the rotation puts up about 30 people that are hardcore involved in the meditation, in the meditations and, mm -hmm. and the group stuff. Then we go and, we get the response, hey, you know, you got to take some time for you now. And I'm like, for me, I, I take time for me. And they're like, no, you don't, you know, you don't take enough. But it's not just me. It was you, right? Um, I did not take time from you. I mean, we're all going through the upgrade. So we have to kind of pull away from all the stuff we're doing out there to give us time here so we can take the information in and let it kind of like, uh, let the program run through us so we, we have a better understanding of what's happening. Yeah, and then actually apply <laughs> what you're learning, and that takes time. Yes. You know? Yes, uh, and you can't just you can't just rush. I, I want to tell people every day, oh, this is what's going on, this is what's happening. But I, after a couple of months, I go, oh, I, I'm meditating at 70% of the day. Like, just take out all the point, uh, portions you're not talking, 
or and you're just relaxing or you're sitting around or you're driving or you're in the shower or you're in the bathroom and you're kind of just doing your thing. That's when this is supposed to take place, like the living meditation. So then we grow as a team and then we hit a certain uh, a certain level where they turn around. And when I say they, I'll say our higher selves, maybe Mm -hmm. our allies. Yeah. Are like, okay, it's time to back off now. And I'm like, why back off? Momentum is key. And they're like, no, your momentum is there. But we we did pick up momentum because now we have um, Jimmy and we have Robert. Well, this is, this is the momentum that started. So what I did, and uh, I'll shout out to Nicole. Uh, she's, we'll take the, some responsibility from oh, you yes, guys. Oh, yes, if I missed anyone, and, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, it's not like um, – yeah. We, I don't want to just start naming everybody on air, but we, we have people that stepped up into leadership positions. What started as a small group now is a large group. Shaman Jimmy stepped in um, months back and was like, hey, man, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I think I could help you with this instantly. Um, and he has shout outs to the Infinites page. So much information that Shaman Jimmy puts out. He's like, we were, we were laughing about it. He's like, there's enough in- information there for everybody to ascend five times, ten times a piece. Because as ascended masters, you've done this not just once, but multiple times. And what you're doing is regaining your traction, your momentum to get back to this place that we once were. So we're not externally looking for it. We're all waiting for something. I know that. I could feel it. Oh, yeah. It's like the group of us. I mean, there, there's hundreds of us, but it's like. It's like we're all I feel like I'm just waiting for a bus to come and it's it hasn't gotten here yet. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, we've been sitting in. I feel like I'm standing in the mud. You could hear it in our talk. We I'm, have like a little stutter to it. I'm just stuck in the mud. I said um, more times tonight than I have the first day we started on. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a lot going on right now, you, you know, in the well, universe. You, we hit these plateaus and then I notice. It's like we're going into the new section of whatever that uh, next level is. So as we're rising, right before that apex, you get the the full moon, a lunar eclipse, and all of a sudden, as the weeks, you're you're like, oh, the full moon's coming. Man, today I start feeling like I'm walking through cement, like I'm picking my feet up through mud. Yep, body aches, headaches. Um, all of our fearless family are going through the same thing. So now while this is what's going on, they said, you need to back off. And I'm like, why should I back off though? Momentum is key. And here we go throwing, and I, I keep throwing it out there on purpose. <clears throat> and as people stepped up, like Robert, he's like, oh man, I'm feeling the 933 morning meditation. Cause I do the 933 New yeah, York yeah, time uh, evening, med- right? Uh, so night meditation, <clears throat> my backing off is because I'm not going to be effective. Right. So for me, my meditations were starting – they weren't actually starting to become bland. If I would have pushed them, it would have been – you'll see the repeating cycle in the meditations. It's the same medi- uh, same repeating cycles we're trying to break. In other words, if you're doing a Shiva meditation, you do it 400 times. If you haven't Shiva'd up enough, there's a problem within there. And you have to be able to um, learn this stuff at your pace naturally, get your – abilities down as a master of the energy that you're reaching out to like the Shiva energy or the Kali energy or the Horus energy or whatever, whatever it is, the Jesus energy, whatever you're connecting to master it. And now it takes some of these things takes lifetimes to master, but we are repairing ourselves and moving at a pace that was, um, never described before. Like where you're going to do it in this lifetime. Oh, it feels like it's only been doing it since I was 38. I'll be 44. And in that chunk of time, lifetimes have been transmuting mm-hmm. more, more so than anything. I don't, I don't think anyone could have given us really the explanation for this. We have to live through it. So during those times now, we're creating leaders. We're not creating a group of fans. I'm not leading a pack like a guru or that kind of weirdo. No, nope, it's a group of like-minded people just talking about like-minded things. In a safe space. Mm-hmm. With no judgments. With no judgments. Okay, so now as this is as this is going on, then it starts popping off. So I, t- I take a step back. Chris would Chris uh, Gio would describe this as, hey, I ran up the mountain. I was tied. I tied a rope to me and you. And right now, um, I ran up the mountain because you were a little slow. And you know, it's windy. It's snowing. It's raining. Whatever. And I was able to make it like ten steps further. And then I pull you up. 
and now I'm exhausted. And now you go your 10 steps and then pull, pull me up. Mm -hmm. And we've all been doing this, right? Like, let me pull you up, not the crab in the bucket where we all grab each other and pull each other down. Like, why are you trying to get out of here? What are you trying to do? No, this is, now I'm taking a step. Oh, you're up there. What's up there? Well, up here, it's this, 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 and this. Let me give you a hand. Come up here because I need help describing this. Boom, pull up another person. Wow, I didn't expect it to be like this. Did you notice all this stuff? Oh, wow, I didn't notice that. All right, let's grab another one. Grab them. Pull them back up. So by the time we get to the certain level on the, on, on the mountain, it's all metaphorical, I have a bunch of leaders, a group of leaders with me, a group of people that are not afraid to be the beings they're meant to be in this place, in this now, in the transformation process, because we were judging each other and we were judging, throwing it around, and I'm a victim of this, or, or I don't want to say a victim. I, I'm a, I've done this. I judge. I judge people, and I don't know why. I don't do it all the time. I'll look at someone and go, wah, wah, wah. I'll say something really nasty internally, and then I'll go, hey, why'd you say that? That bothers me. Why'd you say that? And I'm like, I don't know what's happening. I was in the shower. I was listening to classic 70s and 60s music and the playlist was terrible right so now I left the, the phone over here so I couldn't get out of the shower so I was forced to listen to that and while I was in there the judgment started flying and what about this and what about that what about this all right because that's my meditation time when I'm in the shower and stuff like I'm, I'm kind of like in and out I pulled myself back and I could see that little crabby pain in the ass just talking like that Right. Like, oh, you know, this person owes you money. You should go get it. And why? And, da, 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 and then creating scenarios about the people that owe you or the people that did did you wrong or, you know, you create these phony. Well, that's what we do in your mind. We think and feel for other people and we create this whole scenario on what we think happened on their end of the problem instead of just taking like, a minute <laughs> and not caring about just letting it go that literally. issue let it go let it go you know uh someone had said and i'm sorry i don't remember who it was it was a couple of weeks back there was a facebook post frank posted something or someone posted something and they you know they had asked oh paula are you gonna you should teach a class on uh neighborhood kindness <laughs> and i don't have enough material and we talked about this the other night be kind no, what happens is there's plenty of material. It's just that we're at the point where it's exactly what you're going to say right now. But it's that just simple. Be kind until you can't be kind. And then if you're not kind, make up for it and be kind again. We fall. We stumble. We fall. We make mistakes. We get up and we move on. That's what we do. We're hum we're, we're, uh, well, what do we always say? We're spiritual beings in human bodies. <coughs> we make mistakes. We think things we shouldn't. We create these scenarios in our mind about why our lives are the way they are or why the people that are in our lives are the way they are. And, you know, none of that is our business and none of that is our concern. And if you just try to navigate through your own life and not put these pressures, that, that these invisible pressures on, our, on, on yourself, on ourselves, and try to figure out what everyone else around you is thinking and feeling, you know, it, it would just eliminate so much stress, you know, I, like, let it go. It, if, if something happened and someone said something that you don't agree with or you dislike, yeah, make your point. Tell them why you didn't like it. Tell them why you don't agree. But then once that happens, let it go. Let that feeling go energetically. Let it go. And move on to the next feeling because then you get stuck in that. And if you keep letting feelings and these weird reactions take you down these weird directions and mm -hmm. rabbit holes, I noticed one thought led to another that yep. led to another. Yep. And they were all separate thoughts. And what I did was I took my judgment and just slid it over to another thing, yep. which I shouldn't be judging. Yep. And you weaved it into an entire story and that, that was made up in your head. And then the next thing I know, I'm going, the music sucks, then this sucks, then you know what? You suck, then this yep. sucks, right? Yep. You suck, this thing sucks here, this pen sucks, this this show sucks. This, sh this And then before you know it, you're like, well, what's good? And you think your life sucks. And you think everything sucks. And yeah, it exactly. Does it because it's a downward spiral, and you <clears throat> have to stop that. You, the, you're the only one that can stop that. We talk about this all the time. If you're in a, if you're in a place, 
emotionally and someone is not matching your vibration or your frequency, it is okay for you to feel the way you do. For example, when Frank wakes up in a great mood, everything is wonderful. But when Frank wakes up in a bad mood, I have to remove myself from the situation because I am in a good mood. I don't need to know why he's in a bad mood. I don't need him to give me an explanation on why he's in a bad mood. That's his space. That's how he feels energetically. That's what's he, what, what he's putting out. And it's up to him to decide how long he wants to feel that way. You know, but... I can't change my vibration and my frequency because he's in a bad mood. Because then now you're in a bad mood. Yeah. And, you know, and I've done that. You know, I've said, oh, you know, you, you, you ruined we, my day. You ru No, I ruined my day because I allowed that to ruin my day. You know, we put a lot of blame on other people for the way we feel. And that really has to stop because. Oh, no, Frank does not need some loving <laughs> chat room folks. But yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but it really is that simple. You know, I mean, it, it's not that simple in practice, but it's that simple in theory. Like, just take notice of your actions and your behaviors and take responsibility and ownership for that. And if someone is not feeling the way you're feeling at that moment, it doesn't make you wrong or right. It just puts you in a different frequency. Absolutely. Separate yourself. Own your feeling. I was doing a little bit of a clearing house with my stuff, uh, clearing people out. I don't want around anymore. Mm -hmm. I know you witnessed some weird stuff this week with me. And uh, people stuck in the loops. I mean, it's, it's a terrible climb up and everything. But I pushed so hard to get a few people out that I got one person I didn't want out because I let it carry to the next call. Right. Right. And that person was a good person. But that's on you. Oh, it is and on me. And I, I feel ownership of it. And I and I'm saying it on air right now because it happened just a, it's, it wasn't that bad. But, but it can be that can be it, fixed. It, it, it can be fixed and remedied. But I look like an ass and I and I'm overthinking. Well, I'm an ass and I'm going to look like one. I'm just going to own up to it later. It wasn't very bad. It was just I pushed the rudeness forward but that's to, the, exactly to the next person it. over. Like, we but, don't need to see you either. And then I was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. And it was already too late. But you see what you said? You're going to look like an ass until you don't. Until I it's don't. It's the way it is. You if have I want to fix yeah, it and, I, wanna... and I'm like, that was a boo-boo, yep. I'm so sorry. Now, I'm not going to sit in that for a month. But some people do the embarrassment or the shame of it oh, no, yeah, that's, or the guilt of yes, it. Yes, yes. You know, I mean, yeah. OK, so avoid the person because you feel guilty or don't, you know, come into contact with people because you feel uh, shame or embarrassment. You know, that's on you. That's all on you, just like all the good feelings are on you. If you're feeling great and you're in a great mood and you're surrounded by wonderful people, that's on you, too. You have to take ownership of that as well. You know, but it's as simple as that. Let it go and move on. You know, it's hard in the beginning. I'm I'm not going to say it isn't, you know, letting that go. That's all part of shrinking your ego. It's hard in the beginning because you don't want to let that go. I don't want to be I don't want to look like I've an asked. ass in front of this person. I don't want to look like this in front of that person. Well, you know what? You already did. It's done. Move on. You know, and if they're meant to be your friends or your circle of friends or in your community, then they'll understand that and we'll move on. What What did I say the other? I'm an asshole once or twice a day just because. OK, just like everybody else. We all do things that other people don't like. We all say things that other people don't like. But you have to move on from there. But I'm also a good person every day. And I also try my hardest every day. You know, I mean, so there's there's balance, but be forgiving and don't get hung up on this. It really is. Don't get hung up on the small stuff. Yeah. Don't sweat the so small stuff. So check this out. I went down a rabbit hole while talking to my mother today a little bit, you know, discussing m my brother and some of the. Oh, when you went over this. to the house. Yeah, today. yeah. So I was like, well, you know this and you know that. And she, we were both holding the mirror for each other. Yeah. So she had just did this to me <clears> two days ago when she came home. She's like, Wah. and I go, oh, wow, that's the first thing you say. So now I'm outside with her and I'm going, wow, right. But I'm not quite like that. I'm building it, though. And I'm looking at her face and the, I could see my own reflection off my mother of myself. And I'm like, oh, I, I just went there, didn't I? And she goes, well, and I go, well, Paula cooks fantastic. 
So every time I eat, it's delicious. And she goes, well, there's one. <laughs> I swear, I, it, it is like Predator Jungle hot today, like where you're just pouring sweat. And we're sitting outside, and I'm like, listen, I'm just going to smoke right here. I don't really care what you think, Mom. Sorry, but whatever. So I'm smoking and sweating and bugging. And she's just watching me, and I'm like, I'm letting it go. And then that switch, that one thing that never really popped its head for 38 years, right? It does after the fact. Not during. You never catch yourself during. It's like the mistake you made by following the rabbit hole all the way down. Yep. But then Paula cooks good, and it's always delicious. Boom, I'm out. And I came out of the, the darkness, and I, I brought myself up top, and I didn't feel dirty from, from going, well, you know, this person, they asked me this stuff, and I'm talking to them about it, and then they just don't want to listen. And I'm realizing that you don't want help. You don't want solutions to your problems. You just want to you talk. Want, you want someone to listen. And, you just and want that people was to my just, hardest da, 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 part da, 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 my whole me, life, what you just said. I always wanted to provide the help. <laughs> I always wanted to provide the help. And sometimes, most of the time, 95% of the time, when people tell you their problems, they do not want a solution. They want you to listen. Right. So if you're not ready to just listen and then observe it and try to understand it, but not like take over the situation. But you don't even have to understand it because it's not your situation. We don't well, even have to Well, when you're just one-on-one, on one, you try you to, have to get an idea put yourself of in what's their going shoes. On. Yes, exactly. But it's not really for us to understand. Right, it's just There's for us nothing. to... There's nothing. Like, you know, when it comes to me and, like, the cats, taking care of the cats, like, people make fun of me. You know, you take care of your cats like they're children. But they are. They're my responsibility. They did not ask to be rescued by me. And now I am solely their caretaker and I am I am their survival. They can't open a can by themselves. They don't have thumbs. Okay? They need me for food. They need me for water. They need you to poop scoop. Notice you know. I get the 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 poop container detail. <laughs> you came late in the party. You got you gotta earn your stripes, Frank. But uh you know, I mean that's the way it is. So people could criticize or tell me they don't like the way, you know, I am with my animals or why do you spend so much time with your animals and they're my babies. That's the way it is. And you, you don't know? even need to understand that. I would just say You don't need to I, understand I would be like it. to understand this, it would be, you know what? Just mind your business. But 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 that's what you have to do. <laughs> that's their mother. But we need to learn how I'm to mind not on our the crazy business. Level. It's not your business how someone raises their kid or or their or, cat or or whatever lives their lives or pays their bills or you know uh, we like to think and feel for other people and say well if so and so only did this this and this their lives would be so much better. How do you know that? You don't know that because it's not your life. It's not your concern. It's not your business. Right. And you you, you can, can only be there. To assist someone if they need your help. That's it. You're not even really there to give advice. You're there to listen. Listening is the hardest part. I had a hard time for years because I just wanted to fix everything. Okay, this is what you need. This is what I think you need from the conversation that we had. And I would go run out and try to fix it. And you know what? People do not want that. They want you to listen. They want to be heard. They want to be listened. They, they want to be heard. They want you to listen. When they talk, uh, you know, Frank and I were in the car the other day and I had told him something, take this exit. And then I had told him why we were taking this exit, but he wasn't paying attention to me when I was talking. And then he asked me, which way do I go? And I said, I just told you, but he wasn't paying attention. So what am I going to have a heart attack because he wasn't paying attention to me at that moment? He wasn't paying attention to me, but I took it personally. You got to get over it. It could have ruined the rest the rest of the day or it could have ruined the next hour I feel or the it's next just, half an hour. It's like programming embedded so deep in us that it takes a long time. To, when you say mind your business, someone goes, ah, you mind your business. And then eventually it starts to go away after a long period of time of really putting work into it. Because I find that minding my business is almost harder than dealing with my ego. It absolutely is. Like when we, when we hit a brick wall and we are told, you know, our higher self or other beings or whatever may be out there giving us the message at the time, say nothing, do nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got that, that means, all week. Right now, I do not have anything to say and I have no action that I can take about... <laughs> 
this situation. About yeah, nothing this I'll say topic. will raise the There's situation. There's nothing I can do right just, now, so say nothing and do nothing. Just observe. Because people try to fill the space, you know, by acting, by reacting. Or let me help, let me do, let right. me do. And it's like you don't have to do anything. You just need to chill. Let yeah, me, the universe will off. figure it out. You know, trust in the universe and the universe will figure it out. You know, I mean, do what you can, but then move on. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, there's another official cat lady <laughs> in the cat room. Thank you. We're all um, cat ladies and cat men. And just no, but it. she understands, Melinda. She understands. Oh, no, I know. She but knows. I, 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 <laughs> the cat room. I think. We, I know you. I understand. think we grabbed a bunch of you before you turned into the crazy cat ladies, though. I think we caught you right at the cusp of turning into that, and then or becoming mama. I trained the screamo outside. I watched her do it, and it was. I think I have crossed over. Yeah, but that's where I'm happy. People, you know. Real people, real radio. Initiating the truth frequency. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Am I a leak or is this a dream? Is it a dream? Is it a dream? A fantasy where I'd rather be. So come and talk with me. Come and walk with me. Is this a wake up call from my reality? All right, what's up, everybody? We are back. This is Fearless. I'm Frank Castle with my empirical translator, Paula Milo. Whether it's how you raise your cats, how you raise your dogs, how you raise your children, whether the message comes through me. It comes through Paula on the level of how you're doing it daily or whether you're speaking with Ra, the collective, or you're speaking with your guides. The message is the same. If I bring Tony Robbins into the room, you're going to get the same message if I bring Ra in the room. I know that sounds funny, but overall, it's the same thing. It's just that we're all programmed slightly different, right? So some people need Tony. Right. Some people need Paula. Some people (laughs) need me. And that's just the way it is. It's just we we contracted the unlock code this way. That's how it is. That's why we're finding each other. That's how we're doing it. We can make jokes all day. Well, it's the truth frequency and it rides the vibe. It is that period. You want Tony Robbins to explain it to you or do you want Frank to do it? Which one do you want? Because I'll tell you about the reptilians as I'm trying to make it happen. And Tony Robbins will just tell you, come on, you can do it. You can be more. You know, or you want Richard Simmons. Come on, everybody, stand up. Or do you want Oprah giving, giving you the message? Right? It's what resonates within you, but the message is pretty much the same it's thing across same, the board. Yeah, right? So message. whether I'm, I'm the good cat daddy, I'm the cat whisperer guy outside, right? Oh, yeah, that's cool. Or – whether I'm the guy that drinks ayahuasca and I roll on the beings or they roll up on me. The message is exactly the same. No more gurus, no more weirdos, no more freaks leading you down these rabbit holes of religions and spiritual pitfalls. You are it. It is you. So everything that you need is actually inside of you. One of the reasons I slowed up on the meditations is because a lot of the people, the beings that we're working with, have to realize the beings that we're working with aren't the end all be all of none of this. But they're also getting tired of being asked the same questions because they are not allowed to share information. They're here to they're here to observe. People start asking about the event. Guess what? Uh, I had five shaman. Well, everybody went in, ask about the event. Let's ask about the event. This is months ago. They would just look at us. Because I think. I'm like, what about the event? Fior, I'm looking right at you. I'm not going to tell you. Fior, I'm going to say your name wrong. I'm going to kick you right. I'm not telling you because. And he goes, 
and just looks at me and I go, so I should just skip this because we're wasting time. But yes. It's just and they go, like yep. that woman who wouldn't read you years ago, you told me about, yes. right? She didn't want that was to read Chris you Gio's because house. she was afraid she was going to change the path Anything of your life. Anything that said could change the outcome. Like, you know, the Pleiadians and all the people that are coming, all the entities that are coming back to give us information about the future because we've talked about time. We talked about it before. It's not. Only human time is linear, I believe, anyway. You know, well, that's it has how a, we regard time. It has a time. start, a middle, and, and an end. end. But time is really happening all at once. Think it's of happening a giant, concurrently. Yeah, a giant ball of energy spinning, and then there's spinning within spinning inside of that spinning. So your past, your present, your future is all happening at the now. Same, yes. That's the hardest yeah, part to explain to time, people. at the same time, it's like now, because it's always now. Even if it's later, it's going to be now. All right, remember um, when you were 12 at the mall that time with your friends? Yeah, that's happening right now. Right. <laughs> like, people don't get right. that. Right, but asking about the event and asking about the things that are going to come, there are no entities and beings that are going to share that with you because the outcome is always changing. There's no definite. So when someone reads the future, exactly. this is, all right, this, no I always definite, knew this. Yes, there's no definite say in, in when, what's going to happen because the future is always changing. Right. So the collective consciousness for a long time was being taught or the overlaying issue was always pr bringing us down this um, Blade Runner future, right? Where where it's kind of like noir looking and things get really weird and it's hot, it, it's like NWO people, they get higher in the classes and then the people just get poor, right? They kept pushing this image, right, of the dystopic futures and the this and the that. And then we started believing it. Like, oh, this is what the future must look like. Right, because we're going there. It'll be flying cars, but it'll be a beautiful floating yeah, city, and everyone doom, under doom eating scraps. Situation, yeah. They, it was always presented that well, way. What about those people that 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 gave away all of their life savings because they thought the world end of the world was going to happen in 2012? Right. Well, this is. I mean, you know. So they pushed the scenario. Yeah. From and the agenda from different directions. Um, they go absolutely nuts with it until you start believing it. Then it starts becoming true, right? And then. The future changes again because we start seeing that dark future. We live through sections of our lives. Um, yeah, he's chasing something. We start seeing these things and we're like, I, I don't like that. And the beings, what they, what they would tell me is, yo, you need to get a crew together and you, you, you need to believe that you can change this. And, and I'm like, well, I, I, how am I going to stop a war or how am I going to do this or how am I – they're like, no, no, no. You need to change – the outcome of this future in, in your, your mind. mind and you have to get enough people to be like, nah, yeah. this is when people are like dystopic future. Um, we're all going to be cannibalizing yeah, and eating games. each other and then yeah. there'll be kings and queens again. You got to be like, nah, we're kings and queens. You and me, us um, together, yeah. us, all of us, we're going to rise. I am going to create my future. Yeah, that's right. So there's not going to be a dystopic future. You're like, no, it's going to happen. Trump's going to lead us there. I'm like, you keep reading that script to me. And I'm telling you, all right, so you're a creator. So if you're stuck in that narrative and you're pushing it forward, you're creating it. So you're changing your world around you. You're changing you and then you change into that world. Well, I don't live in that world no more. I don't want nothing to do with that world. And you're like, well, we're headed there. I'm like, says who? You? Says the newspapers? Says the scripted agenda? Get this guy a bucket of ayahuasca and an empty bucket. Get him a garbage bag to th put over his head and throw up in it when he's purging. I, all right, you have to start. So going back to what we said earlier in the show, right? Paula makes great food. Oh, so every time you eat, it's good. Okay, well, that's the one good thought. I had a. I used to listen to Alex Jones, and I, I kind of like went down that into dark that conversation. Right, so. I was I was at work every day and I, I was a federal inspector and I'm working and I'm like, yo, this whole world's coming to hell. Right? And I'm going, you don't understand. You don't understand. You don't understand. But that you don't understand never stopped. When when I was sitting there quiet, having a cigarette or smoking a blunt, hanging out with my friends, whatever, in the back of my head, I, I was like, yo, doomsday scenario, 9-11's an inside job. It's all going to end tomorrow. So I couldn't grip a good thought. 
So I'm going to a show. I'm going to do my song Watchtower, right? Well, 9 an inside job. Right? It all goes with the truth movement. That's why I don't work with the truth movement. Because I'm like, I don't work with movements no more. I'm my own movement. movement. Mm-hmm. All right? Like, you're just another copied cat of the same thing we're fighting. You can say whatever it is you want. Resistance needs to happen on all levels, and that's fine. But it don't mean I have to like you specifically, right? Because you find that everyone tries to become a gatekeeper all of a sudden. As soon as they get a camera on them or someone asks them, oh, you know, I I liked what you said there. You know, do you have anything to say on this? And all of a sudden the hubristic jerk off comes out and you start going, oh, yeah, me, 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 me. And it becomes about you. Let's ask Adam Kokesh how that worked out for him. I was a good friend of his. I had I had to remove the number from my phone and everything because of the 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 weird rabbit hole that went down. Now we're now we're years out. Years. I Jesus, 15 years out from that I am. And I'm saying to myself, none of that happened and we're on the upswing in full ascension. I'm I'm, I'm doing a show called Fearless. I'm an ayahuasca shaman. Like everything changed. Everything and they're like, "Well, but still, I'm like, no, ask my group of people, ask our fearless family. They're not, it's not my group of people. Ask my family. They're all over. Ask the ones going through the process if we're going to go down that dark future. And the answer to us is no, I won't allow it. And they're like, well, you're not doing anything. I'm like, we're doing a lot. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, yo, a hundred people meditating on one thing can change it, change the outcome of it, yes? And they say, oh, well, that's yet to be proven by science. Well, we're doing it. That's what. That's that's not just what we're doing. That's just one thing we're doing as a group. You know what we're doing as individual people? I've met the most beautiful people undercover because they didn't know when I mean, we didn't know. And then meeting them, I'm like, you got to shine. Oh, my God. Like, lowercase j. I'm like, you have to shine. You have to come out of the dark. You have to come out of here. Come out. Come out. Show everyone your gifts and abilities. Don't worry. This is amazing. Right? And we're just pulling ourselves up and up and up and up. Why? We change the thought and the narrative in our head. No, no. The doomsday scenario, reptilians eating babies. I, Yo, it happens. But you know what? I'm not going to sit here and sweat it out. I've had them come right in the house, guys. All right. So last week. Or two weeks ago when I was talking, what part of the discussion was the crucifixion that I went through on the bed that day, right? Where I, I felt like I was being crucified. Later in the evening, I ate mushrooms. And one of the things, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful experience. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think Nick uh, Zervos, my my uh, my brother, fearless artist at IamWeAreFearless.com, kind of went through this. Where the mushroom throws it into a curveball at you. So you're having the most beautiful experience. I meet Vishnu during the meditation. He comes out. He looked like Jesus Christ, right? Space Jesus. And I'm like, oh, that's space Jesus. I'm like, no, 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 wait. That's Vishnu. So a lot of people have been talking, well, you guys are doing this Hindu nonsense, and I can't can't resonate with that. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not Hindu nonsense. Okay, so I'm learning step by step from the first goddess all the way through whoever's the next thing, how to become a better version of myself. So the Isis is my, the goddess Isis is my heart, my love, right? Why you're doing it, the sacred feminine in me. I, I, that's why Ra didn't roll right up on me. They had the women come, the goddesses come first. You have to let her out. That doesn't mean go walk around with high heels on. That means you have to be, there's parts of you that you have to become aware of because you're more than what you, what you are. Right. So now we have to find balance as we rise through this. But for so long, we were like creating the scenario for failure over and over. No more failure. This is all I say all day long. Now, you guys know my story. Busted neck, busted back, miserable, absolutely miserable all the time. I'm on tour with Wu-Tang, miserable. These are my heroes. They don't even like me. And I'm like, whatever, a little tweak and a change of attitude and and direction. I mean, when I smoked DMT, they showed me alongside my path, the golden path, 
I was walking alongside of it, but I wasn't on it. So I'm missing all these wonderful things just by inches. So it's always within your reach, but you never could grab it. Yep. You're always chasing the dragon, mm -hmm. the tail, and this. this okay. So now I'm, I eat the mushroom. I meet, eat, eat Vish, I meet Vishnu during the meditation. He hits me with this light. I'm going, oh, I speak to your wife all the time. She helps me with my creativity. And I'm like, this is beautiful. And I have to sit down because it's oh so glorious, right? The next thing I know, the room's being covered in complete darkness. And I'm like, what's happening here? What's happening? I'm going to make this all work real quick. So the dark covered the room. And anyone who knows the comic books has heard of the Spider-Man character. There's evil guys in the comics that wear this black goo. It's like an alien goo suit. And it look, makes them look alien-like. And they very scary and they'll eat you. Well, one of them is called Carnage. And uh, a demon was standing in the room that looked exactly like him. And if something like that was real, that's not good at all. But I saw his face and it kind of threw me off. It was realistic looking, but I said, you look just like that guy. But but it is real. The minute I gave that thing credibility and said, mm -hmm. you look like this guy, it grew yep. to the size of the room. And I'm like, you know, it was a holy shit moment. Like, oh, oh no, what, what's happening? Why is my world changing? Okay, so old me would be all fantastical. Wow, this is happening. Demon. Oh, what do I do? Get me Ra. Get me Isis. Get me, get me something. Get me a Shiva. I stood up and was like, oh, you're going you're gonna to do that? Come over here. And he got as close as you can get without actually touching me, like to scare me. And I went, cream, cream. And that's with a K, right? And this thing melted back. It was palm size here. It was this size in my hand. The remote control for the TV. It's a small one. He shrunk to that. From there, I just held him and then opened. It looked like a portal thing. Transmuted. Threw it right in. Done. And I went, wait a second. Was that being messing with me? And they were like, oh, yeah. You literally handled your business in two seconds. And I, I gave it credibility by calling it the carnage demon because it refers – I refer it to the comic book, but – I have a feeling that the demon or or whatever it is takes the thing that he thinks will scare you, takes the form of that. And it's now how are you going to deal with this? Hmm. So the Hindu stuff that we've been doing have been, um, uh, what are they called, mantras, right? So the mantra is to get your mind locked onto one focused thing, right? So the word cream can clear out your space. By sending through energy from Kali, which is just another energy source, not – yes, the being with the arms, the girl that has the tongue out, but no, not possession, not physically there as like your friend hanging out in the room with you, helping you battle monsters. No, you become that, a source of it, and it flows from wherever the energy source comes from. Because it all comes, it's all over the place. And you ground yourself, bring it through, send it out through the room. Job well done. What is that? Well, it's a, you're in a, a hologram. This is what I was trying to say. And the vocal, your vocal unlock by saying the mantra is how you defeat these ridiculous things that are part of the illusion, the machine, and whatever else you want to call it. Now, I did have a problem recently where there were beings standing in the house. I told you this the other night. Well, we talked about it today. The beings walk in the room. You only see 3% because of your body suit, right? So your flesh suit allows 3%. So it's what we see and what we feel and how we react. We're trying to raise that percentage up, right, by having the higher percentages of the awareness. Now, physical beings came in the room. They're just out of phase. So – you're standing there. I can see them. And I'm like, oh, they're standing right there. And I, they're physical, but I can't walk over and grab them. My third eye visually sees them standing there. My two eyes just sees lights moving across the room. So I can't walk over and grab it and choke it. <clears throat> but saying a word isn't going to do nothing either, right? So all the mantras that I taught myself 
I'm like, does it have any effect on these things? Because if a reptilian comes to your door, it's just like having a, a, your neighbor come over. Hey, you got some sugar? It's the same thing. But I can't physically fight them because they're out of phase with you. They're out of that 3%, right? But they're there. So what do you do? And this was my argument. And they're like, see, this is how, this is how my mind works. This is, this is the weirdo mind. So I'm like, how do I, because I know the next step for the ascended ones are going to, and we're only ascending first, then helping the other, everyone else is going to do it as well. So no one's any better than anyone else. It's just some will do it first. So then they can grab you and help you going through what you're going through. But the next step is seeing them in the room with your two eyes. So now domes and aims and creams and ohms, does that work? Because those beings actually have telepathy, telekinesis, mind powers, can shut you down and do stuff. So how do we deal with this? Ah, this is why I've been quiet recently. Because I've sent things on their way, and then other things I've done, like I've lit sage and went dome, and they just laugh and walk right up to me. They're like, you think that's going to work on me? So I had to learn something different. So I've been walking through the arena battling each of my internal enemies one at a time. Plain and simple. Every fractal, every version, every character, unlike others who don't do that. Yeah, it's interesting. I know it's hard, right? It is because I I don't agree completely with that. I think if you just ask them to leave your space or you demand that they leave your space, they need to leave your personal space. Okay, now I agree with that. See, that's what I've been taught through learning the mantras and stuff. You're holding your space. You're mm -hmm. grounding. You're doing all that. But that's like the physical characters there. So you're demanding they leave. Now, I'm in full belief. I'm the creator, right? So you could send the reptilians. I'll stop you. And then you're like, wait, what? That sounds ridiculous. So maybe there is a point of us being capable because we are creators. We are trapped inside these bodies or we're rocking these bodies right now. And then they were hijacked. The programming was hijacked. Um, getting us where we are today. In that 3%, you know, only being able to see like this. But as this is coming off, these guys are going to be in the room with you. These are the things that worry me. I'm not just the spirit things flying around because all the mantras and the internal f functions that I've been working on, get rid of that stuff. The demons and the this and the that. They can't exist where we're going. But the other guys, because it, does it come down to a physical or a mental battle you know, because I've yelled leave and they've laughed in my face. It doesn't matter. No, I know. But they didn't matter. leave. That's my point. And I didn't want them to stay. So these are where it gets weird. So I guess if they're going to just the ones that are going to just take you or come in and do whatever it is they're going to do or just going to come in and do it just like anyone else would come in and do it. If somebody came in here with a brick right now, threw it through the window, walked in the window and said, yo, I'm taking everything in here. OK, I guess it's going to go down this way. Right. Because you can do something crazy like that. But there's consequences to everything. My point is we're learning all these things and they're stepping stones building us to those moments. But I think there's consequence everywhere. So I think even those beings and entities, which is maybe they don't want. Maybe that's why they don't just kick our asses or maybe that's why reptilians just don't run up in here. Ooh, excuse me. And eat us I because there is consequences. A universal law. That's right? what I think. Like yeah. the other guys that are watching might step in and then it becomes something bigger than – and then it's just issue after issue. I don't know. I don't know. But we are here at these points. So the demon gets whacked. This character gets whacked. And now I had guys in the room and I'm like, get out. Nothing. So we're learning as we go. I mean I'm proud to talk about it openly because there's some things. There's so many things. I know nothing about and as they come up and take place, I know it's happening with other people. I know there's others out there in our giant weirdo family that are going through the experiences. Once one person started seeing in the group, one, I knew it was going to go wildfire style. And now it's just boom. Because it gives, you know, and I know it feels good for you because it lends credibility to your stories, you know, where other people are like, oh, I think he's making it all up. It's like, okay, you can think that. Like the plants the other night. You were talking to the plant. 
you know, we posted this on Facebook and people were laughing. You know, Frank was like, you know, I, Paula, do you think that's weird? And I said, no, tell me what the plant wants. Oh, yeah, wants? I stopped. The plant, I, w- I was standing in the palm tree and I was playing with it and I could just hear it talking and it was loud and clear. And the closer I got to the plant, the louder it got. So we were fixing the plants by trimming and finding out what was wrong with them. And I was like, Paula, am I going crazy? And she's like, no, look at that plant over there. So tell it's, me what that one needs. Yeah, tell me what that one needs. And then when you're like, yeah, well, it needs this. But do you think I'm crazy? No. Now, now, what, what does this plant need? And you would, you just took me around. But see, that just <coughs> – not only did it start to come out, I was able to practice it more, do more. And now it's becoming – because I've been around it for a couple of days now where it's just loud. Now it just goes down. And every now I could focus on it and focus away from it. It's it's um, yeah. No judgment zone is important, huh? It is important to have no judgment zone because people look at us like we're crazy. That's why we don't talk about this with with you know outside of our uh, fearless group because people are like, okay, Frank, the plants. The are plants are to our you. allies. But you know like, that's so, the way so it is. So much so, and they're symbiotically working with us. That's like one of the other things you recognize as a as a, at least like a shaman. You're like these plants love us. Right. That's pretty intense. That's an intense thought. Right. But it is. Believe it or not. You know, but you choose to believe what you're hearing or nah, not. It believe it. B- believe it. Stop but, playing it off. No, like no, that. But, Just believe it. No, it's true. But, go go drink ayahuasca. <laughs> yeah, but this was just. <laughs> See how much the plants yeah, love Yeah, this was you. a Friday. No, I'm just breaking This was jobs. just a Friday afternoon, you know, but. <coughs> choose to believe what you believe, but it is as simple as that. You just. I want to thank you guys for your life. For, for being here with us tonight. Remember, we're all upgrading. We're releasing negative energy during this time. All the things that don't suit you, let them go. Release them all. You don't need them. Oh, purge out what you need now. Do it. This is the time. Get rid of it. Get light. Go light. Let's get light. Let's do it as a crew, a whole team of fearless individuals. I love each and every one of you out there so much. Shout out to everybody listening on iHeartRadio and on TFR and everywhere else you're finding us everywhere. Shout out to the people on YouTube. Shout outs to Paula. Shout outs to <laughs> Roxy. Shout outs to Buddy. Shout outs to Sherman and, uh, and Oscar. Oh, and thank you all the TFR folks who uh, got a subscription. Thank you. You can always get a subscription to the show. You get all the past episodes and you can rock and roll with us straight from the very beginning, day one, and see how we've changed. You'll see how everything's been changing. So it's where your attention uh, is and where your focus lies. And we love you guys so much. And I look forward to talking to you next week. And those who want to join the TFR uh, Fearless Group, go on Facebook, answer the question, and we'll let you in. Right? Because we're your protection from deception.